well uh, I'm going to talk about first of all the basic plan of my lectures so this lecture is going to be the lecture 1a where I'm going to talk about the hadron classification very briefly and then in lecture 1b I'm going to talk about quark light diagram followed by Zweig's rule and its application in lecture 1c I'm going to talk about the other sections uh, about when I deal with those lectures so let me start with today's topic uh, what I'm going to talk about is the classification of hadrons made up of UDS quarks now you know that there are six types of quarks now to get a basic idea about these quarks in this basic static quark model static in the sense that they don't interact they're non-interactive <coughs> now we will deal with this only three quarks and then see what predictions can be made using various symmetry ideas and whether we are able to see those experimentally or not now with this basic idea let me first basically tell you about the basic quark model now you say that uh, these quarks if you plot them in a two-dimensional s s for strange is quantum number and i3 or the third component of isospin then we can see very beautiful patterns the reason for these patterns I'll talk about in a later class but what I'm going to talk about here is that in terms of this quark model we can basically group the various elementary particles with integer electric charge in two different ways the first being the baryon consists of three quarks and antibaryons consisting of three antiquarks so in short we call them qqq baryons and mesons being quark and antiquark q q bar okay so with this let me first talk about the baryons the first example of baryons i have shown here is the decoupled baryon having the spin three half now how does this three half comes from now this in the most basic way you can think about cup or grouping baryons in two ways in one way all the three spins are aligned up and in the second case one is aligned up another is aligned down and uh, like this like this so one aligned up here you can see one aligned up another aligned up and the third one goes down so in this alignment one quark with spin opposite to that of the other two quarks right now in this first case we have the spin parity three half and they have been grouped like an inverted triangle as you can see that the delta and the sigma particles they form isospin this the delta particles here form an isospin quadruplet sigma particles form an isospin triplet and the numbers in brackets are the average mass of these particles and here we have also written down the isospin of these particles here now what other interesting things can we see from this pattern let me first talk about the difference in mass between these two cases here and here you see the mass difference between two neighboring isospin multiplets say for example m delta minus yeah m sigma minus m delta that is m sigma minus m delta like this is 152 similarly for the other cases the numbers are given here what is interesting is that these numbers they are different but also not by a large number they are at least you can say that they vary about an average or very little scatter is among them a difference that is almost constant and with an average of about 147 mpv now if we use this relation m for mass a plus b into y y being the hypercharge then we can predict the omega minus particle 
and indeed this way it was predicted long before it was discovered just based on this simple formula so this means there is something very interesting going on here now i have just shown here this inverted diagram in terms of the quark constituents and you can see here just you see that this is ddd i'll going to talk about it later on as well if this is ddd and you replace one d by another you, you get this ddu so in a way you can think of it how the masses come into play that is if from here to here the mass is higher this means the mass of the s square must be higher than that of the u square because here you have d u u here you have u u s so d is replaced by s and the uh, the number the dip, the difference being of the order of 147 so this means the s quark must be heavier than the d quark and so this is how i am shown here this plot also interestingly you must observe that this is the first you see this thing very thing u and s u here also u u the difference in masses this is the first indication of the approximate flavor symmetry between u and u and d quarks and this difference between the u and d quark masses of the order of 2 to 3 mev is the basic reason behind the isospin in nuclear physics now what do you mean by isospin basically it means that proton and neutron are two parts two identical parts of the nucleon and they become just identical if we switch off the electromagnetic interaction right now this difference between proton and neutron now we know that one consists of uud another is udd so basically it all boils down to the difference in masses of u and d quark now since the mass difference between the two of this u and d quarks is of the order of 2 to 3 mev so this is the reason why we observe this isospin symmetry in nuclear physics between this proton and neutron okay now you see the multiplet regularity as interpreted in terms of the three quarks with the quantum numbers whose these are the quantum numbers now for the sake of completeness i have shown the quantum numbers for all the six quarks up down strain charm bottom truth and here yeah. i have written all these quantum numbers i i3 s charm beauty truth and this is the electric charge <clears throat> okay and this is the relation for the electric charge right okay so now let me again as i was saying so here i have shown the assignment of the observed decoupled baryons and its interpretation in terms of the quarks and again the masses are shown here the isotopic spin and average mass indicated on the right as well now the composition in terms of quarks of the 10 baryons of three half decoupled is shown here the regular mass increase with increasing strangeness may be explained assuming that the mass of the strange quark is about 150 mev higher than the masses of the u and d quarks just i have mentioned before now free quarks have never been observed and it is assumed that they remain confined within hadrons within the hadron quark can be regarded as a nearly free particle the quarks u and d should have a momentum of the order of r0 1 by r0 and if i take r0 of the order of one fermi meter is of the size of the hadron then in natural units we get that the fermi momentum is of the order of 200 mev i'll talk about it later in my little lecture the importance of this now so what is so interesting you see given that the baryon consists of q q q now if i consider only three quarks uds then there are 
3 into 3 into 3 that is 27 combinations possible out of them and just talk about the decoupled barrier so what is so special about them now we must introduce symmetry principle which is peculiar to the members of the particular multiplet and I will talk to you about it in my later lecture and just again showing these things to you in order to motivate you okay now let me talk about the other case that is the jpi is equal to half plus baryonic octet the baryons similarly yeah this is what i've also talked about before now this case here again here you can see your familiar neutron and proton so these are the isospin doublets of the nucleon average mass number is here and this is the sigma particle okay so total eight now let me ask you an interesting question so this is something related to this suppose let us consider a scenario where the overall hadronic wave function psi consists of just spin and space parts that is psi is can be considered as a multiplication of spin and space parts and why multiplication because they are just independent to each other now what would be the resulting multiplet structure of the lowest like baryon states composed of the ud and s squares so how are you going to think about this problem the first thing is that i want to tell you that there has to be something more in this total wave function that there is, has to be something more compared to the space spin we need flavor and we also need color which i'll talk to you about later now if we don't include those then what we will predict is something which we never observe so it's just a theoretical exercise but still it's good because it's very simple and gives you a basic idea about how to construct a multiplet okay so you see the lowest line implies that the internal orbital angular momentum between the quarks is zero so l is equal to zero then of course parity is positive and so the space component is symmetric now since the Pauli's principle requires the overall wave function to be anti-symmetric under the exchange of any pair of like quarks, it follows that the psi spin must be anti-symmetric. Thus, any pair of like quarks must have anti-parallel spins. That is being a spin zero state. Now, let us consider all possible baryonic states where, yeah, Q is UDS. Now there are six combinations with the single light pair UUD like this UUS with the spin of UU equal to zero. Adding the spin of the third quark leads to six states with J pi is equal to half plus. Now in principle there could be six combinations with all the quarks the same like this but you, you, I'm just shown here the three of them then there is also the yeah and equal but in practice these do not occur because it is impossible to arrange all these three spins into an anti-symmetric way right yeah you can go out finally there is one combination where all the three quarks are different which is the uds here there are no restrictions from the Pauli's principle so the UD pair could have spin 0 or spin 1. Adding the spin of the S quark leads to two states with J pi half plus and 1 with J pi is equal to 3 by 2 plus. Now if we just collect all these results together, what we get is an octet J pi is equal to half plus and a singlet J pi equal to 3 half plus state. Again, which I have told you before is something both of which is never observed but still it's a good exercise now let me talk about the mesons now the mesons can be formed either with the two quarks with spin in opposite direction 
just like the previous scenario or with the two spins aligned in the same direction. Now in the first case, the mesons have spin zero and negative parity. We call them pseudo-scalar. Forming a nonet, which I have shown here, you see this thing. Yeah, K0, K plus, DS bar, US bar. Now in the case of spin aligned in the same direction, which is called pseudo vector mesons these mesons form the non-net of particles which are shown in the this side of the diagram okay the quark content is still the same see it is also k0 k star 0 is again ds bar okay now let me first talk about the pseudo scalar mesons you see this is the diagram now these are the lower masses for j pi is equal to 0 minus if we consider them we automatically get the lower masses one they form an octet plus a singlet the isospin singlet is the eta dash 958 meson the octet includes the non-strange mesons you don't have the s quark among them that's why non-strange the strange mesons with s is equal to plus one and the strange mesons with s is equal to minus one these are the other stuff now in terms of the quark model the mesons are made up of quark antiquark pair limiting ourselves to just three quarks then there are nine states possible that is non-net of mesons now the qq bar combinations of the skewed scalar mesons have j pi is equal to zero and this is the parity which is negative and the non-strange dual quarks can be combined to form the following four combinations you see the isospin triplet and the isospin singlet here i've just shown you the masses i'll talk to you about the this thing in my later lecture where i'll discuss about the flavor states how to construct the flavor states for these cases now with the addition of the S quark, there are five additional combinations. That means you just don't consider UD now. You consider S as well. Include them and then we get these scenarios. We get an octet here. So how, what I have done, I have shown you that first if we consider only two of them, two quarks, then QQ bar, four combinations. And these are the four combinations here. Now if you include this three together then there are three into three equal to nine possibilities and these are the nine possibilities i have shown here the state denoted by eta eight and the isospin singlet eta one have the same i i3 and s but differ in the symmetry properties of the wave function the eta eight and eta one mesons are not directly observed this is also something interesting the observed states are the linear combinations obtained through a linear through <laughs> a mixing angle I'll talk to you about it and then yeah here yeah let me talk about the pseudo vector mesons and this is what I mean by the mixing angle now the same thing with a different spin j pi is equal to 1 minus again lower masses are shown here now it can be again considered to be an octet plus a singlet state here I have shown you the QQ combinations of the vector meson on it. J is equal to plus 1. P is negative. Right. Now the QQ bar combinations are similar to those of this multiplet. And here also these two states are mixed. Phi 1 and phi 8. And we observe these things. This is the experimentally observed here. Okay. So uh, this is... Uh, where I'll now end my class in the first lecture and I'll meet you in my second one. Okay.